Hi everybody, it's Michael Boland here from uh, BolandPreImages.com. Today we're going to import some images off a, a card. Uh, we're going to put um, those images on the hard drive and also enter them into our uh, Lightroom 3 catalogue. Okay, on the left hand side here is uh, the left panel and here we've got the right panel. These two panels, they, they give us the options on various uh, various things that we can do with our images as we um, uh, import them. At the top we've got the modules, library, develop, slideshow, print and web. Obviously we're going to uh, we're going to be working in the library because we are we are in the process of organizing. Here at the bottom we've got tools that we can work with. And right at the bottom here, uh, this area here will be populated by uh, thumbnails of um, the pictures that we'll be working with. I think having said all that, um, we can click the import button. I've already uh, placed a card into the computer and Lightroom 3 of course uh, finds it automatically. As you can see uh, the default is that uh, the images come up checked. In this uh, left hand bottom corner here it tells us there's 86 photographs or images and it will take 464 megabytes of memory. Um, as I say that the default is that they come in checked but you can uncheck them all quite simply. Um, if, uh, if, you just want, if you do want to import them all but uh, maybe it's the odd one or two um, you just uncheck those that maybe you don't want to import maybe they're not good enough. However, for today, we're going to import them all. Um, we have gone through this before, but um, just to say, you can double click, double click, and um, the picture becomes bigger. Click again, it enlarges it, and then you can use the hand to pan around. A click will take it back to size, and then clicking the icon, the grid icon down here, will revert to the thumbnail, or you could just press on the, the G. Uh, the G key, and I'll do the same thing, G for grid. Okay, um, I think that just about covers that side of things. At the top here you can see it says copy, so we're obviously going to copy these images somewhere. Uh, over on this side now we've got our, our options. Uh, the beauty of these is um, that they, you can open and close them as necessary. So if we just close them, and uh, let's start with the top file handling. I've chosen minimal because that way we can we can get to see things quicker. This uh, box here, if you check it, uh, it gives you the option of making a second copy uh, to a, another area. Uh, if you click on the downward arrow here, you can choose a folder somewhere on your computer, so you can you can do the job in one go. Okay. Anyway, today we're, we're not going to do that. So if we close uh, close that box, now then file renaming. Uh, we have quite a few options to choose from here. These are templates that are ready made and you can in fact edit a template or make your own and um, away you go. Um, these bottom two are of interest to me. They're new to Lightroom 3 and to be quite honest with you I did think that this would be the one that I would use. It's called, let's just go back to it, it's called shoot name plus original file number which basically does exactly as it says. It gives you the option of uh, a shoot name, which in in this case the place was called Y Bunbury. Excuse my slow typing. Now, what actually happens here is, let's say we, we pick this one here, um, number seven. It takes off the 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 DSC underscore and replaces it with your shoot name, which is great. And then it gives it the original file number, 0007.nef. And I did think I was going to use um, that template. Thinking about it, I think probably I'm going to go for the second option. Well, not the second option. Um, let's just go back there. I think I might be going, I think I might go for this option, shoot name and sequence. Let me just show you the difference. Same option to give, um, you know, a shoot name, so we'll, we'll stick with Y Bunbury because that's the name of the place that the photographs are. But in this case, you can choose what number to start from. So it can start from 1, 
Now here's the thing, let's say you've got two or three cards with the one place and if you've got say 300 images on one card then the next card the numbers are going to repeat aren't they? So what you can do with this system is if the first card finishes at 300 well you can when you import the second card you can start the number from 301 so I think probably this will be the system or the template that I will use okay so we'll shut that oops sorry we'll shut that down now then let's look at what we can apply during the import well you can you can pick from quite a large number of um, presets here what you've got to take into account of course is that if you pick a preset it will apply to all the photos on the card and you can always go back to it and do it in the develop module so it's, it's not necessary unless you really really want to do it metadata that that's uh, a little bit more important um, as you can see I've made um, a preset and I've called it Boland Images 2011 but if you hadn't made one or if you wanted to make a new one uh, just click on new the form will open up and you can enter into the form as much or as little information as you wish now if, if we have a look at my preset there's a little bit of information there it's got a name um, it's got my name it's got where I live has a, an email address and um, a website address okay uh, I could include a phone number post I could include all sorts it's up, it's up to you but once you've filled it in you can then hit the create button then you've got um, a preset that um, is there to use you don't have to do it again it's the, once you've entered the information once it's, it's ready to use again and again and again every time you upload from a car uh, and the beauty is that every single photograph will carry that information with it so um, great time uh, labor saving device okay keywords well obviously whoops sorry this is my computer it does on the hour it, <laughs> it does a backup um, sorry about that. Uh, keywords well let's put why uh, why bun beret again forgive my terrible typing uh, and um, Cheshire so the place is called why bun beret Cheshire now for now they're the only keywords that I'm going to enter because um, the, any keywords that you give it apply to every single picture on the card so um, I wouldn't say tractor or countryside or uh, pub whatever this pub is um, because those keywords will not apply to every single picture on the card so we'll just stick with those two for now okay we can close that let's have a look at the destination now then the default setting for this is by date okay I've already ticked into subfolder and I've called that subfolder new Winbury. Okay, I'm actually going to change that now to just call it Winbury. That was from a, a practice run. Uh, I've had several actually, but anyway, so we'll call the subfolder um, Winbury. Uh, why Bunbury? Sorry, well, I keep calling it Winbury. Um, and if we open up the disk, what you see here is the 2011 uh, folder that I've picked. And there's Y Bunbury. But then, by default, it picks a year uh, and a, a date. Which, I'm not too sure whether I'll use that. It's, it, it looks like it could be a bit messy, a bit overkill. So, you've got another option. You can use into one folder so let's click on that what that does is it gives you a folder called Y Bunbury or whatever name you've you know deemed correct and it's put that directly into 2011 okay so now we can go ahead and press on the import button now at the top here you can see uh, there's a progress bar that will tell you uh, how you progressing I guess uh, and on this side here you'll see um, your photographs as they are or your images uh, as they come in uh, this figure will go up now I'm just going to um, I'm just going to halt the the video for a moment until this is done it'll only take a couple of minutes 
Okay, we're back in business. It only took a couple of minutes, but there's no point in us all sat here watching it. Um, what I'd like to point out is um, now we've got the catalogue, and as you can see, we've now got the 86 um, images um, in the catalogue. Well, they're not actually in the catalogue. They're, they're sets of instructions for those 86 images. And here we have the Wineberry um, uh, Winebury, Wybunbury. We have the Wybunbury uh, folder that we um, that we made a few minutes ago. Now then, just before we finish with this, I'd like to show you something. See these photos here, from there to there. Now they were pictures that I took. I was stood in the middle of this really large field, and uh, I thought this would make an excellent 360 degree. Uh, panoramic shot. Well, obviously, when I put them together, I'll probably just use three or four of these, um, but hopefully, they will make a very nice panoramic shot. Now, if, for example, I wanted to uh, keep these separate in a separate folder, I've highlighted them, so then the, the uh, uh, Y Bunbury uh, folder is um, picked. I click on the plus. And there you see I've got various options. If I add a subfolder, give it a name, I'm going to call it Panorama. Okay. And you've got a couple of check boxes here. Now just make sure that they're both checked because if <laughs> you've selected the photographs you want to go in, and if, if this isn't selected, they won't go in. So make sure it's selected. Hit the create, and there we go. Now then, we click on that, there we have a new folder, Panorama, you see, with just those pictures in. Now if we go back to Y Bunbury folder, you'll see they're still in there. What you can do, if you like, again, click the uh, plus button, see here, it's checked, show photos in subfolders. Now that applies right through. Uh, you can uncheck it, or you can go up to the library. And again, it's checked show photos, uh, show photos in subfolders. So if you uncheck it, now then what happens? We're in the Y Bunbury folder, but they're now no longer there. Okay, they're only there in the Panorama folder. Now the problem with this is it can get a bit confusing. I can't show you now because there's not enough folders in the system yet. But for example, on my computer, uh, we're in my my pictures folder and then we're in 2011 now for 2011 it was shown it would show no photos because the photos are obviously in the subfolders and the subfolders at the moment being Y Bunbury and Panorama so it can get a little bit confusing so personally I like to keep them I like to keep um, that, that uh, box checked so if we go back there they are back in the folder okay and that my friends concludes our importing from a card and thanks very much indeed for watching have a nice day and we'll see you again soon thank you bye bye